support vector machines are perhaps one of the most popular and talked about machine learning algorithms. They were extremely popular around the time they were developed in the 1990s and continue to be the go-to method for a high-performing algorithm with a little tuning. Support vector machine is a supervised machine learning algorithm which can be used for classification challenges. In addition to performing linear classification, SVMs can efficiently perform on non-linear classification as well. So what are support vector machines? It is a discriminative classifier formally defined by a separating hyperplane. In other words, given labeled training data, the algorithm outputs an optimal hyperplane which categorizes new examples. In simple terms, an SVM model is a representation of the examples as points in space mapped so that the examples of the, sub examples of the separate categories are divided by a clear gap that is as wide as possible. Let's visualize this. In this graph, we can see that the two classes are separated by the largest gap possible. The space between the red line and the closest point to the red line is called a margin. So, for one dimensional data, the support vector classifier is a point. For two dimensional data, the support vector classifier is a line as seen in the previous slide. For three dimensional data, the support vector is a plane. And for four dimensional or more, the support vector classifier is a hyperplane. So let's talk about the hyperplane now. A hyperplane in an n-dimensional Euclidean space is a flat n minus one dimensional subset of that space that divides the space into two disconnected parts. So a line is a hyperplane or even a 2D plane for a 3D data is a hyperplane. SVM algorithms use a set of mathematical functions that are defined as the kernel. Sometimes it is not possible to find a hyperplane or a linear decision boundary for some classification problems. If we project the data into a higher dimension from the original space, we may get a hyperplane in the projected dimension that helps to classify the data. Let's see what we mean here. As shown in the figure, it is impossible to find a line to separate the two classes green and blue in the input space. But after projecting the data into a higher dimension, we, we were able to classify the data using a hyperplane. Hence, kernel helps to find a hyperplane in the higher dimension space without increasing the computation cost much. Usually, the computational cost will increase if the dimension of the data increases. The mathematics behind how kernels work is out of scope for this video. The SVM model needs to be solved using an optimization procedure. You can use a numerical optimization procedure to search for the coefficients of the hyperplane. The most popular method for fitting an SVM is the sequential minimal optimization SMO, method that is very efficient. It bakes the problem into sub-problems that can be solved analytically by calculating rather than numerically by searching or optimizing. In the next video, we'll implement the support vector machine. We have two choices here. We can either use the scikit-learn library to import the, logic, the SVM model and use it directly or we can write our own model based on the equations above. We'll talk about implementing support vector machines. A support vector machine is a type of supervised machine learning classification algorithm. SVMs were introduced initially in the 1960s and were later refined in 1990s. However, it is only now that they are becoming extremely popular, owing to their ability to achieve brilliant results. SVMs are implemented in a unique way when compared to other machine learning algorithms. In this video, we'll implement support vector machines with the help of the scikit-learn library. For the implementation, our task is to predict whether a bank currency note is authentic or not based on four attributes of the note. Those attributes are the skewness of the wavelet performed image, the variance of the image, entropy of the image, and the kurtosis of the image. This is a binary classification problem and we will use the SVM algorithm to solve this problem. Uh, the detailed information about the data and a link to download the dataset can be found in the description. Download the dataset and store it locally on a computer where you intend to write the implementation. So let's start the implementation by impl uh, importing all the necessary libraries. 
first we need to import pandas as we need to store our data in the data frame and the next is numpy followed by uh, matplotlib and then we need the uh, scikit-learn modules here we'll be uh, using the train test split module uh, which we have had not in the previous videos for linear and logic regression implementations uh, but for SVM, we'll actually have a train test split and see how uh, the algorithm works on the uh, test data. Next, we need to import the SVM class, which is SVC, support vector classifier. And at last, we need to evaluate our algorithm. So we'll need some metrics for that. And let's use the classification report module and yeah I think we are done so now let's import the data okay I think we have some problem yeah it's a spelling mistake dot metrics I have a lot of spelling mistakes here okay now let's import the data into our program to read the data from the csv file the simplest way is to use the read csv method of the pandas library the following code which i'm going to write is going to read the bank currency node data into a pandas data frame let's have bank data equal to pd dot read csv and the name of the csv file is bill authentication which you can find in the description of the video okay now there are virtually limitless ways to analyze data sets with a variety of Python libraries for the sake of simplicity we will only check the dimensions of the data and see the first few rows to see the rows and columns of the data execute the following command and in the output you'll see uh, 137 to comma 5. This means that the bank node data set has 137 to rows and 5 columns. Now to get a feel of how our data set actually looks, let's actually see the first 5 rows of the data set using the head command. And here you can see the first 5 rows of data set and you can also see the attributes of the data set are numeric. The label is also numeric that is class 1 or 0. Let's pre-process the data before training the model. Data pre-processing involves two steps. First, dividing the data into attributes and labels and second, dividing the data into training and testing sets. To divide the data into attributes and labels, execute the following code. Let x equal to the attributes, so bank data dot drop. One and y equal to bank data cross, which is the label. In the first line of the script in the cell, all the columns of the bank data data frame are being stored in x except the class column which is the label column. The drop method drops this column. In the second line, only the class column is being stored in the y variable. At this point of time, x variable contains attributes while the y variable contains corresponding labels. Once the data set is divided into attributes and labels, the final pre-processing step is to divide the data into training and test sets. Luckily, the model selection library of the scikit-learn library contains the train test split method that allows us to seamlessly divide the data into training and test sets. Uh, let's write the code for that. X train comma 
x test comma y train comma y test is equal to train test split x comma y and we want the test size to be 20% Uh, yeah, we have divided the data into training and testing sets. Now is the time to train our SVM on the training data. Scikit-learn contains the SVM library, which contains built-in classes for different SVM algorithms. Since we are going to perform a classification task, we will use the support vector classifier class, which is written as SVC in the Scikit-learn's SVM library. This class takes one parameter, which is the kernel type. This is very important. In the case of a simple SVM, we simply set this parameter as linear since simple SVMs can only classify linearly separable data. Let's write the code for that. So SVC classifier is equal to SVC and the kernel is equal to linear. The fit method of the FVC, F SVC class is called to train the algorithm on the training data which is passed as a parameter to fit the mod fit the, me the fit method svc classy fire dot fit x train comma y train to make predictions the predict method of the svc class is used so y prediction is equal to sv classifier dot predict x test and let's actually print y predict to see our predictions and as you can see the algorithm has been run on the x test data and all the predictions have been saved in the y pred variable and we can see the predictions for each of the row for x text now to evaluate the algorithm Confusion matrix, pre uh, precision, recall, and F1 measures are the most commonly used metrics. Scikit-learn's metrics library contains the classification report which can be readily used to find out the values for these important metrics. So let's actually print the classification report. For Y test and Y pred. So here, as you can see, the most important metric which we can see is the output of the accuracy of our algorithm, which is 99%. This is a very basic implementation of SVM using the scikit-learn library. And now you can go ahead and implement the algorithm on different datasets from Kegel, etc. Thank you.